Oh, happy sunshine, family. Lunacy's back here. We are going to continue on with this precipe to dismiss. I downloaded the original document that Heather filed, and it's 60 pages. And we're just going to get right into it. I want to say thank you for the amazing response that I had from my video yesterday covering the U.S. Corporation's response to Heather's price of pay. Uh, my email inbox was absolutely filled this morning. I haven't had a chance to go through everything. There are several people that are requesting uh, telephone conversations with me uh, from all over the world and also in my comment section. Uh, it looks like uh, a, a different vibration is now flowing through many members of the Lunacy family. There is a vibrational jump, a vibrational increase, and an awareness of the situation that is really magnifying and increasing inside all the consciousnesses out there that consider themselves part of the Lunacy family. And I just want to give everyone a huge pat on the back, a big lunacy family hug. Uh, this, is, this is the kind of connection and response that is going to move mountains. All right. I've, I've only read a couple pages of this uh, Precipe. And it is absolutely mind-blowing so far. Uh, we want to go on to our monitor so that you can see my special pink pointer. All right, there we go. So when these are filed electronically, it's the United States Courts Archive, www.unitedstatescourts.org. And <laughs> grace bless Heather, <laughs> this just reads so beautifully. So this was filed in the courts. We'll go down to the bottom of the page here. On September 29th, 2017. I believe this is also Randall Keith Bean's birthday. And what an amazing birthday present this really was to him. It begins... The alleged, or it just says alleged, United States District Court, Eastern District of Tennessee at Knoxville. The United States of America is the alleged plaintiff versus Randall Keith Bean and Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe, the alleged defendants. Allegedly, <laughs> this is the alleged number 3 colon 17 dash CR dash 82, Varlin Shirley, the alleged U.S. District Judge and U.S. Magistrate Judge. The clerk action, adjustment of all numbers recorded therein, and in 17-531-M, I believe this was the uh, identity hearing that was held in Washington, D.C., inclusive of all records therein and thereto. <clears throat> In bold, all capitalized and underlined, precipe to enter dismissal with prejudice and declaration of due cause. Open quote, precipe and declaration of facts. End quote. Now, before we get <clears throat> any further, let's cover what the definition of precipe is again. We went over this yesterday. Precipe, an original writ, one of the forms of legal process used to commence an action. A precipe was drawn up in the alternative and commanded the defendant to do what was ordered or to appear and show why he or she had not done it. An order that commands the clerk of a court to issue a formal writ of execution directing the enforcement of a judgment already rendered 
and commanding a public officer to seize the defendant's property in order to satisfy debt. And we see that that is exactly <clears throat> what Heather is presenting to the courts and to the world and to our country and to all of us. This is live, guys. Well, it happened about two weeks ago. And I just want to say, you know what? The timing of when I got that email out of the blue from my dad synced up perfectly with the release or filing of this document. And I really wonder how much of the interactions that I have with my father are directed psyops, or I guess the new term is MISO, M-I-S-O. I forget what that stands for, but I found that, I think, on Kafka Winston World. All right. This Praesipe is addressed to Deborah C. Poplin and... Deborah C. Poplin, all caps, so it's going to the person and the corporation, alleged United States, specifically and particularly clerk of court for the Eastern District of Tennessee, Deborah C. Poplin, and to all alleged principles thereof and alleged agents thereto, hereafter, quote, clerk of court, end quote, in all caps, with reported address, Howard H. Baker, Jr., H.S. Courthouse, 800 Market Street, Suite 130, Knoxville, Tennessee, 37902. Phone number, 865-545-4228. To Thomas A. Varlin and Thomas A. Varlin, the All Caps Corporation. Alleged United States, specifically and particularly <clears throat> District Judge, Chief for the Eastern District of Tennessee, and to all alleged principles thereof and alleged agents thereto, hereafter District Judge, with reported address, Howard H. Baker, Jr., H.S. Courthouse, 800 Market Street, Knoxville, Tennessee, Suite 143, or excuse me, Knoxville, Suite 143, Tennessee, 37902, and phone 865-545-4762. To C. Clifford Shirley Jr. and C. Clifford Shirley Jr., all caps corporation, alleged United States specifically and particularly magistrate judge, chief, for the Eastern District of Tennessee, see Clifford Shirley and to all alleged principles thereof and alleged agents thereto, hereafter referred to as, quote, magistrate judge, end quote, in all caps, with a reported address, Howard H. Baker, Jr., H.S. Courthouse, 800 Market Street, Suite 144, Knoxville, Tennessee, 37902, and phone 865-545-4260. To Nancy Stollard Har and Nancy Stollard Har, the All Caps Corporation, with reported address 800 Market Street, Suite 211, Knoxville, Tennessee, 37902, and phone 865-545-4167. Alleged United States, specifically Department of Justice, Knox, USAO, and particularly alleged United States Attorney for Eastern District of Tennessee, and to all alleged principles thereof and alleged agents thereto, inclusive of Cynthia F. Davidson and Cynthia F. Davidson, the All Caps Corporation, alleged assistant United States Attorney for the Eastern District of Tennessee, and Anne Marie Sfalto and Anne Marie Sfalto, the All Caps Corporation, alleged assistant United States Attorney for the Eastern District of Tennessee. Two, Randall Keith Bean and Randall Keith Bean, the All Caps Corporation, the alleged defendant. This is the I am the IUV logo, Presepe, and Declaration of Facts. Page little I of 
IV, so page one of four. Here's Hat J's initials. Here's Hat J's uh, handwritten initials and the date and her thumbprint, I'm guessing, or a fingerprint. Precipe number one for due cause. And this is this is all written in caps. And there are a few things that are bolded within all of these precipes. So there are multiple orders here given to Deborah Poplin, the clerk of courts. For due cause, declared below, restated, alleged clerk of court shall forthwith enter this precipe and declaration of due cause into the alleged record of the above titled alleged action, restated. Precipe number two. For due cause, declared below, restated, alleged United States District Judge and Magistrate Judge shall forthwith enter into the alleged record an order of dismissal with prejudice of the above titled alleged action restated. Precipe number three. That's the third precipe. It's the first two precipes restated. Heather is being very clear. And for due cause declared below, restated, alleged, United States District Court Judge and Magistrate Judge shall forthwith enter into the alleged minutes of record an order to forthwith release all alleged defendants of the above titled alleged action, restated. Precipe. Four is precipes number one through four restated and for due cause declared below restated alleged clerk of court shall forthwith adjust the alleged record accordingly of the above titled allegation or excuse me the above titled alleged action restated notice Failure to forthwith duly comply with precipes number one through four. Each act done and in the alleged record of the alleged clerk of court shall be duly accepted as evidence of separate acts of corruption. I'm going to read that again. <clears throat> The failure to forthwith and duly comply with precipes number one through four, each act of failure done and in the alleged record of the alleged clerk of court shall be duly accepted as evidence of separate acts of corruption. The reason that they're separate acts of corruption is because she can start stacking these charges, stacking the different actions that are available to, to her through law. Furthermore, said acts shall be forthwith duly assessed, reconciled, and settled under existing commercial and true bill accounts by original. Accordingly, with further copy of statement of said accounts to be noticed into the above titled alleged action restated. See clerk's records for 3 colon 17 dash CR dash 82 and 17 dash 531 dash MJ. <clears throat> declaration of due cause hereafter is referred to as declaration of facts in all caps. With full responsibility, accountability, and liability under due oath to declare true, accurate, and complete, I duly declare the following, and I am conscious and competent to make said declarations, now duly entered by precipe into the alleged record of the above titled alleged action, restated and without prejudice, ab initio, or from the beginning, Nunc pro tunc praetera praetera. <clears throat> Maxims of law. <clears throat> I had somebody send me some maxims of law in an email, and I got that today, and interestingly enough, they're in here as well. I need to raise my microphone stand here just a second. <clears throat> All right, that's better. Okay. These are the maxims of law. Maximum, maxim of law number one, nothing can be born from a fraud. 
or deceptive acts and practices, and all such actions are null and void ab initio. <clears throat> and remember, that is from the beginning. Maximum of law number two, jurisdiction is the legal authority to hear, do proceedings and make discretion, judgment, and order in action. <clears throat> maximum, of, maximum of law number three, lack of jurisdiction can be duly declared at any time prior to final disposition of an action, except in the instance that it appears that a perpetrator used fraud or deceptive acts and practices to influence another to believe that they had jurisdiction over them. Then maxims number two and three and four through 10 are in force and potentially maxim number one. <clears throat> maxim of law number four. <clears throat> when lack of jurisdiction is duly declared, the burden of proving jurisdiction shifts to the one who invokes it is proper. Then maxims six through 10 are in force and potentially maxim number one. <clears throat> wow. When a lack of jurisdiction is duly declared, the burden of proving the jurisdiction shifts to the one who invokes it is proper. I wonder if that means invokes it as proper. Right here. Okay, maximum number five. Once lack of jurisdiction is duly declared, an alleged court cannot proceed in an alleged action when it clearly appears that the court lacks the required that the said court lacks the required jurisdiction and any action made by said court is null and void ab initio or maxim number one is in force. Maxim of law number six, an alleged person or court that appears to lack jurisdiction has no authority to make or hear action or reach merits and determinations, but rather shall forthwith dismiss the alleged action and in the event of failure to do so, maxim number one is potentially in force. Maximum of law, maxim of law number seven, when due declaration is made <clears throat> that a person, act, thing is not legal, the burden of proving legality of said person, act, or thing shifts to the one who invokes it is proper. Okay, well, <clears throat> maybe she's just cut copying and pasting this invokes it is proper. Maybe it, this word should be is. I'm not sure if, if the, the flow that I'm looking for is a difference between legal ease and normal spoken speech. Uh, then maxims number six and eight through ten are in force and potentially maxim number one. Maxim of law number eight, absent legally due sworn, verified and validated declaration made with due signature and seal of proof of a person, act, thing, or jurisdiction. Any alleged action made by such a person, act, or thing is null and void, ab initio, or maxim number one is in force. <clears throat> Maximum of a law, <coughs> excuse me just a second. I am going to mute my microphone and take care of my voice. All right, we're back. All right, maxim of law. Did we read number eight? I can't remember where we're at. Absent legally due sworn, verified and validated declaration made with due signature and seal of proof of a person, act, thing, or jurisdiction, any alleged action made by such a person, act, or thing as null and void, ab initio, or maxim number one is in force. Maxim of law number nine, when a duly sworn, verified, and validated declaration made with due signature and seal is duly noticed, a due rebuttal shall be made to 
each specific and particular point made in the due declaration being rebutted. Maxim of law number 10, a duly sworn, verified, and validated declaration made with due signature and seal, duly unrebutted, specifically and particularly stands as law. Wow, guys. This is not indecipherable at all, as Cynthia Davidson and Anne-Marie Sfalto claim in their response. They changed it from... Uh, referring to it as a as a precipe, and they refer to it as a motion, which it is not. This is powerful stuff, guys. She's basically the first couple pages here, telling them what their law is. And these maxims of law, they're, they're foundational. Okay. Roman numeral two, Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe slash the all caps corporation, Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe, has duly issued, delivered, and noticed in the above titled case, restated. A, legal due sworn, verified, and validated declaration made with due signature and seal of legal proof of legal existence, status, identity, authority, title, and ownership of property. Original Factualized Trust, Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe and its annexes, restated and incorporated by reference as probably is set forth in full. Probably doesn't mean if. And this precipe and declaration of facts restated. B. Legal proof of legal existence, status, identity, authority, title, and ownership of property. Official transcript from August 29th. 2017 and recording number Knox dash DCR underscore three dash 17 dash CR dash 82 underscore 2017 08 24 underscore 14 17 57 both incorporated by reference as if set forth in full <clears throat> well there's another if Okay, letter C, due cancellation of alleged true bill, quote, indictment, end quote, and the, quote, order of commitment to another district, end quote, and, quote, nunct pro tunct praetera praetera, end quote, withstanding cancellation of all attempts to create a presumption of consent given by Heather Antucci Giraffe and the All Caps Corporation, Heather Antucci Giraffe, Original due declaration of addendum of law, presumption, and perpetuity restated. Roman numeral three, Randall Keith Bean and the all caps version. Randall Keith Bean has duly issued, delivered, and noticed in the above title case restated. A. Legal due sworn, verified, and validated declaration made with due signature and seal of legal proof of legal existence, status, identity, authority, title, and ownership of property. Notice of filing, original factualized trust, Randall Keith Bean and its annexes, restated and incorporated by reference as if set forth in full, restated. So I think as, uh, it probably is the if. Um, it looks like this whole <clears throat> letter A point here, it's almost like computer code. They're saying, hey, just imagine that the legal due sworn verified and validated declaration made with due signature and seal of legal proof of legal existence, status, identity, authority, title, and ownership of property, uh, for Randall Keith Bean, all of that inclusive, just pretend that, that that is right here on this line. That's kind of the way I'm reading that. It's as if it's set forth in full here, restated. If you've got any light on that, that would be great. This is just uh, some minutia of legalese that I'm a little confused with. <clears throat> all right. Letter B, legal proof of legal existence, 
status, identity, authority, title, and ownership of property, official transcript, Randall Keith Breen from August 29th, 2017, incorporated by reference as if set forth in full. Letter C, do cancellation of alleged true bill, quote, indictment, end quote, quote, nunc pro tunc praetera praetera, end quote, for due cause, original due declaration of addendum of law, presumption, and perpetuity restated. Roman numeral four, the following alleged persons, individuals, and entities have failed to duly make, deliver, and notice legal due sworn, verified, and validated declaration made with due signature and seal of legal proof of existence, status, identity, authority, authorization, and jurisdiction. The first person that has failed to duly make, deliver, and notice legal, due sworn, verified, and validated declaration made with due signature and seal of legal proof of existence, status, identity, authority, authorization, and jurisdiction is the United States Corporation, the alleged plaintiff. The second person is Nancy Stollard Haar and the all caps version corporation of Nancy Stollard Haar, the alleged United States specifically the Department of Justice, the Knox USAO, I believe that's the Knox U.S. Attorney's Office, and particularly alleged United States Attorney for the Eastern District of Tennessee. C. Cynthia F. Davidson and the all caps version, alleged U.S. Attorney, or sorry, Assistant U.S. Attorney for the Eastern District of Tennessee. Anne Marie Sfalto and her all caps corporation, the alleged assistant U.S. attorney for the Eastern District of Tennessee. Letter E, Thomas A. Varlin and Thomas A. Varlin's all-cap corporation version, alleged United States, specifically and particularly the district judge, chief, for the Eastern District of Tennessee. Letter F, C. Clifford Shirley Jr. and his all-caps corporation counterpart, Alleged United States, specifically and particularly, Magistrate Judge, Chief, for the Eastern District of Tennessee. Uh, Item number G, or letter G. Letters are numbers, by the way. Deborah C. Poplin and the All Caps Corporation, Deborah C. Poplin, Alleged United States, specifically and particularly the Clerk of Courts for the Eastern District of Tennessee. Letter H, Parker H. Still and the All Caps Corporation. I don't see the the Parker S-T-E-I-L version. That would have been amazing to see that included in here as well. Uh, So Parker H. Still and his all-caps version, item Sonans. Wow. Let's switch over. Item Sonan. Okay. Yeah, we come across a lot of new words and terms. And I have no idea why my internet is being so ridiculously slow right now, other than the fact that I'm recording probably one of the most important videos that we've gone over so far. Wow. Wow, how... Where's my internet, guys? I'm connected. It says I am. All right. Well, let's head back over to the to the price of pay and we'll check back and see if that loads up. Wow, how disappointing. All right, so we don't know what item sol- sonums means right now. Item Sonans, alleged United States, specifically 
alleged Department of Justice, Knox Federal Bureau of Investigations, and particularly alleged special agent of the Federal Bureau of Investigations. <clears throat> Letter I, Jane slash John Doe. Oh, unknown person, the alleged four person and endorser of alleged true bill indictment. That's amazing right there, guys. They wouldn't even name the person who put their signature on the paper, the indictment. Letter J, Federal Reserve Bank, New York. Letter K, USAA Federal Savings Bank, both alleged persons. L, Whitney Bank, an alleged person. Letter M, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, an alleged person. Letter V, Article 4, letters A through M, so all the ones I just read through, restated, and do not legally exist, <clears throat> have authority to act, or jurisdiction of the alleged titled action above, restated, or over the alleged defendants therein named, restated. Letter A, the United States of America, inclusive of its numerous, quote, state of, ellipsis, end quote, Item Sonens, inclusive of its alleged corporations, departments, bureaus, agencies, principals, agents, and members thereto and thereof, hereafter, all referred to as just all caps United States, was formerly declared <clears throat> a corporation at Title 18 USC sections 3002 subsection 15, and that being duly accepted as true, was duly foreclosed and duly terminated in 2012 for due cause inclusive of the Federal Reserve Board of Governors Reserve System, formerly declared an agency of the United States at 18 USC section 6001 and elsewhere and that being duly accepted as true was duly foreclosed and duly terminated <clears throat> in 2012 for due cause inclusive of members a federal reserve bank new york b usaa savings bank and c whitney bank federal De sorry number 2 federal deposit insurance corporation or the fdic formerly declared a corporation of the United States at 12 USC, uh, I guess that's chapter 16, section 1811. That being duly accepted as true was duly foreclosed and duly terminated in 2012. And any and all international equivalents of the United States were also duly foreclosed and terminated in 2012 for due cause. See Exhibit A, which is a partial list of corporations foreclosed, restated and incorporated by reference as if set forth in full. Letter B, Declaration of Facts. With said specific due foreclosure, commercial bill, true bill, and terminations was duly made, issued, registered, secured, verified, validated, and noticed with courtesy, copy, duly delivered to appropriate persons, individuals, and entities as identified in Exhibit B, restated and incorporated by reference as if set forth in full and specifically and particularly as follows. What she's saying is that she's got all the paperwork to prove that they've been foreclosed on and that they have been given notice. So that was uh, page IV of IV for this little introduction here. And now we're going to get into the declaration of facts continued. And we are into UCC financing statements. All right, we're about half hour into this. So... <clears throat> I think when we come back for part two of the precipice to precipice, uh, we are going to pick up right here with this UCC financing document. Wow, this is a 
really <clears throat> amazing document, guys. And the response so far that we read yesterday from the United States attorneys or the assistant U.S. attorneys, uh, it reminds me <clears throat> of a child throwing a temper tantrum and closing their eyes and holding their hands over their ears <clears throat> and shouting, la, 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 la just so that they can ignore everything that is truly going on around them. <clears throat> now, in a spiritual sense, we are here to live life. And we innately know the easy way to live life we know what's important to us. Love, relationships, peace, happiness. And all of these words that I'm throwing out here, I have redefined. I'm not using the same definition for those words that, that I have for my whole life. I would say in the last five to ten years, <clears throat> many of those words have been redefined. Now, I want to <clears throat> define peace for you. Peace is the absence of irritation. You cannot go grab a jar off the shelf, open it up, and have peace. Because peace is not something physical. Peace is the absence of irritation. And our system <clears throat> appears to be intentionally designed to infuse irritation into our life in many different areas. Now, when you live L-I-V-E, you're on your spiritual path. If you start doing things backwards, L-I-V-E turns to E-V-I-L. <clears throat> and that's pronounced evil. When I say evil, I mean life is backwards. <clears throat> Living is backwards. And the only way that a society of people who innately knows that they want peace, happiness, and joy. And let me define happiness for you. Happiness is the ability to make things happen in your life when you want them to happen. <clears throat> Most of the irritants that take away our peace come from an inability to be happy or an inability to make things happen in our life when we want them to happen. <clears throat> now, when we can't be happy, when we can't make things happen in our life, then we get irritated, then we lose peace. And if we cannot find any recourse then we pretty much shut down around that issue. <clears throat> and when there is a, a force out there that willfully ignores their own senses, <clears throat> that refuses to acknowledge blatant observations like documents filed in official courts, official foreclosure, and non-existence of all of these huge entities that continue to pretend that they do exist and that they do have authority and jurisdiction. The only way that that evil vibration continues is because the darkness has offered it a safe place. And by darkness, I'm not talking about visible light necessarily. I am talking about an analogy that ideas, any ideas are the light. And if you are held in an absence of ideas, then you are held in the darkness. Now, the only way you can truly have a complete blackout or absence of ideas is if you shut down the precursor observations that are going to spark those ideas. 
So you create a matrix where the only observations that a person can make from the time that they're born all the way through however long they've got in their life, this particular cocktail or matrix of observations will lead just about any human being into the same perceptions and thus the same behaviors. Once we have a new idea and we feel the difference inside, there's no going back. We've seen the light. <clears throat> We're not going to deny our senses anymore, and we are holding those accountable who are closing their eyes, holding their hands over their ears, and saying, la, 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 la. No, I'm U.S. Attorney Cynthia Davidson, and there are prior court decisions that say we have jurisdiction. La, 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 la. Some very astute and observant people in the Lunacy family have pointed out that all the cases that were cited in the U.S. Corporation's response to the Presepe were all prior to 2012. There is no precedent after or given, no court precedent case offered for support of their position that was after 2012. So you've heard me say it many times before, the way we root our perception and knowing is through direct observation. And we've got a group of people that is waking up and growing in consciousness, awareness, and also in sheer numbers and size as indicated by how many people push the thumbs up button on my last video. <clears throat> Roughly 10% of the total views gave a thumbs up to that video. <clears throat> we are close to the 100th monkey family. And I don't know if you guys know what I mean when I say the 100th monkey. I am guessing that some of you do. But the nutshell version of the story goes like this. There were some islands that were being used for nuclear ordnance testing, and the islands were irradiated and destroyed off the indigenous monkey population. And attempts to reintroduce monkeys to this island failed <clears throat> as the radiation levels in the plants and the foods that the monkeys were eating was killing them. And in yet a subsequent attempt to introduce monkeys back onto this island, they released a bunch of monkeys onto the island and then they had one monkey that they taught how to wash his coconuts in the water. And then they took that monkey, dropped him off on the island. So only one monkey had the idea, the light, that washing my coconuts off is what my behavior is. And just by merely inserting that idea adjacent to all the rest of the other monkey consciousnesses on this island, that idea began to spread. And it started slowly. So after a couple weeks, they came back to the island and they found that monkey. And he was still washing his coconuts, but there was another monkey next to him that was washing his coconut too. They came back a couple weeks later and now there were four. And then they came back again and then there was more. There was eight. Well, they keep coming back and the number of monkeys washing their coconuts is growing <clears throat> all the way up until they're getting close to a hundred monkeys washing their coconuts. And then something very interesting happens. I mean, there are thousands of monkeys on this island and yet it didn't slowly infuse through the rest of the monkey society. Once they hit a hundred monkeys instantly, boom, overnight, 
the entire rest of the monkey population was washing their coconuts. Now, if there's no benefit to be gained from washing your coconut, then to see such behavior spread through a population like wildfire really is a head scratcher. You wonder what explains that. But what we've got here is a perfect example of how light is contagious, of how once you make the observation for yourself, take the idea all the way through, try it out, see how you feel, and if it feels better, well, you're going to keep doing it. And if it f continues to feel better, you're going to tell all your friends that, hey, this is my new truth. And then what you've done is introduce them to a doorway, to a new experience, to make the observation for themselves. And I dare say that most of the avenues of study in truth seeking and picking apart this deception follow this general dynamic. You've got people that look into it, inspect. <clears throat> That's what the word inspect is all about. It's spectacle is the root, spect, and then in. So inspect. Also interesting that inspect could also mean to not look at because I-N could be uh, a negative, a contrary type of meaning in a prefix, like inaccurate means not accurate. So inspect could be what? We're not looking at it. There's many examples in our language of the definitions of words throughout history morphing into exactly the opposite of what the original meaning of the word or term was. <clears throat> So once you've looked into something, if you still don't get it, look again. That's what respect is all about. Re, to do again. Spect, to look. So once you've inspected and respected, then you can come to a place of knowing for yourself. And that's exactly what we're doing here. We are inspecting and then we are looking again. And when you do this, a general story unfolds that is very decipherable. If any of you are still confused as to what Heather's argument is here, if any of you are still of the same vibration of confusion and unknowing about what Heather's arguments are, please let me know in the comment section. This, <clears throat> this is probably one of the, one of the biggest events unfolding in our, in our lifetimes right here. And one of the things I wonder about is the timing between this court case, the precipice that was filed, the email I got from my father, which effectively took me out of commission for a couple weeks and all of the horrible events from around the world these great disasters uh, I just wonder if and how it's all connected it 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 seems totally twilight zone to have all of these things going on at the same time and I'm just noting that a huge bit of light, ideas, and information has been delivered to our court systems in official legal avenues under price of pay, appear to be fully supported. And every one of you that would like 
to give the powers that be a huge observation. You can continue to press the thumbs up. You can continue to leave comments and you can continue to increase the view counts on my videos by sharing this utmost important information with anyone, anyone at all. They might put their hands over their ears, close their eyes and say, la, 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 la. Well, guess what? That's the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast is ignoring your senses, ignoring your eyes, your ears, ignoring that which is blatant right in front of you. I got to say, there's a lot of similarities between the way the government is behaving here and the kind of behavior that I've seen from my father. And then the examples are really too numerous to, to go through right now. So we're just going to leave it at that. That's my little lesson on true seeking perception, authorship, peace, happiness. Wow. We defined a lot of interesting words today. When we come back, we're going to get into this first UCC financing statement. Wow, guys. Uh, I, I'm just blown away. This is so huge. They are officially put on notice. They have to formally respond to this Presepe and August 18th, excuse me, October 18th, 2017 at 9.30 a.m. in the courthouse. So tomorrow at 9.30, we're going to have a hearing on this. And that's going to be really interesting. I hope that Judy Jandora is going to be doing some live videos out in front of the courthouse, but I don't know. I haven't heard of anybody preparing to do coverage. If you know of anyone that's going to do coverage, please leave me a comment down below. And if Judy Jandor is listening and you're going to be there, uh, that would be great. I really appreciated uh, your work that you did during the, what was it? The detention hearing. All right. Peace out, guys. We'll be back soon with more of this. I love you. If you have any emails, love lighter links for me, send them to lunacy, L-U-N-A-S-E-E -E, at protonmail.com. And look at that. We stretched a half hour video into an hour just by flowing with what information was being channeled to me.